This video is all about synth bass and how you can start playing synth bass on your worship team from the keys position. Now you might be thinking, we already have a bass guitar on stage, so why would the keys ever get in the way? Well, the answer is synth bass sounds are layered into the mix on modern worship music all the time. If you've listened to a popular worship song recorded in the last five or 10 years, it's probably already got some synth bass in the mix complementing the bass guitar. So in this video, we're going to demystify synth bass. You'll learn about different types of synth bass sounds, some synth bass playing techniques, and tips on how you can start introducing them to your worship team. Hi, I'm David from sundaysounds.com where we provide resources to help worship teams like yours level up the keys position at your church. And today we are focusing on synth bass. This video is probably a little bit overdue. Synth bass is all over modern worship music recordings, but doesn't get nearly as much discussion as other common key sounds and techniques. That's why I think this video is gonna be really important for a lot of you out there who want to add this depth to your sound but don't wanna step on your bass player's toes, maybe feel a little bit nervous about what can be a pretty intimidating type of sound to introduce. Because if you mess up with a big synth bass sound, it's gonna be noticeable, people are gonna hear it, but that doesn't have to stop you from learning this skill. We're gonna focus on lowering the stakes, making it less scary and easier for you to feel like you can contribute this to your worship team. Now, before we dive in, if you're a worship leader or keys player, Take a second to subscribe to the channel now if these topics interest you. Okay, so let's start off by defining why you should start adding synth bass from the keys position. I already mentioned one of the biggest reasons. Worship bands like Hillsong, Elevation, and Bethel, along with countless others, all of these groups are layering synth bass sounds into their arrangements. But it's not just about exactly copying these artists for the sake of it. Layering synth bass into a live room is a great way to add extra power to your band's mix. If you do it right, you don't get in the way of your bass guitar, you'll actually enhance what they're doing and make them sound better. And because of the frequencies you'll be playing in, you won't be getting in the way of the vocals or the other melodic instruments in the band. Great low-end bass sounds can really be that secret sauce that takes your band's live sound to the next level. So now that we have a couple of reasons why it's worth doing, let's get into the how. To start, let me give you a couple examples of some synth bass sounds. One of the most common synth bass sounds you'll hear layered in is called sub bass. It's called that because the bass sound contains some of the lowest frequencies that the human ear can hear. If your sound system has subwoofers, then this kind of bass sound is really gonna be mostly heard through those. These are the frequencies you feel just as much or more than you hear. Here's a sub bass sound played from our Sunday Keys template. All right, so this sound is purely low, low end. There's nothing going on in the higher frequency spectrum. Sub bass sounds are some of the most subtle additions to your band when it comes to adding synth bass. You can use a sub bass sound like this one that doesn't have any high end to speak of, and it just pushes the subwoofers in your room a little bit harder. All the note definition and attack for the bass sounds is still gonna come from your bass guitarist in these cases. But you can also find sub bass sounds that include some higher frequency content, like this one. So there's just as much low end frequency content here as the previous sub bass sound. But along with that, there's also some note definition provided in the attack and some more harmonic content in the higher frequencies that make this bass sound more noticeable and defined. Here you can still absolutely complement a live bass guitarist and add more grit to your band sound at the same time. Now, both of these sounds sustain for as long as I hold the note. And this is a really common setting for synth bass sounds in a lot of modern worship music. Oftentimes the synth bass will hit the chord changes and simply sustain until the next chord change. This is great for thickening up big choruses or bridge parts. But other times you'll want a bass sound that doesn't sustain in perpetuity. A real bass guitar doesn't do that. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna pull in this sound from a recent update to our Sunday Keys template. This update was entirely focused on synth bass sounds and introduced over 20 new bass presets to the Sunday Keys sound library. So 
So this sound starts off strong, but decays over a period of several seconds. So while the attack is still strong, it fades out over time like a bass guitar would. This leaves even more room in the mix for your bass guitarist and would also allow you to play those bass notes a little bit more frequently if you'd like to match your drummer's kick. You can take this a step further by choosing a synth bass sound with a very quick decay time. We'd call this a bass pluck sound. With a pluck sound like this, you're making a pretty prominent statement with the bass sound that can stand out in the mix nicely. For some great examples of pluck bass sounds in use, you can listen to some of the more upbeat songs by groups like Hillsong Young and Free, or a wide range of pop music where this type of sound is commonly used. One last type of synth bass to touch on is arpeggiated synth bass. This style of synth bass sound features a synth bass run through an arpeggiator to create a rhythmic, repeating pattern. Now there's a really wide range of arpeggiated bass sounds you can tap into, because not just the synth bass sound, but also the arpeggiator effects programming can drastically change how it sounds and feels. Now that you've learned some common types of synth bass sounds, let's talk about playing them live with your worship team. I'm gonna give you three techniques to focus on from simplest to most complex. First, you can simply add a sustained sub bass sound to your other key sounds and set the layer range so it's only playable in the low notes of your left hand. In Sunday Keys, all the synth bass sounds already have this layer range predefined, so it's easy to simply load a layered patch that includes a sub bass sound. Then just play the keys parts like you normally would and adjust the volume of the sub bass sound to a usable level for an entire song, or you can adjust it as you go throughout. So I've got a piano, a couple of pads, and a bass sound all in Sunday keys. I'm just gonna combine them together. And now I've got control of the bass sound on this fader right here. So I'm gonna start with that all the way out. And here's how it sounds. And then I can bring this bass sound in until it sits right in the mix. If you've got a nice subtle sub bass sound, just layer it in a little bit and play the piano as you normally would. Make sure you give yourself some control over the volume of that sound so that it doesn't stand out more than you'd like it to while you're playing. The second technique for introducing synth bass sounds from the keys position isn't really that different from the first, but here, instead of just layering the synth bass in with the other sounds, we're also gonna carve out some space on the keyboard for just the synth bass. We can do this in main stage easily by adjusting the layer ranges of the other sounds and setting their lowest notes to be above the synth bass sound. I'm gonna show the channel strips area here, and one at a time, I'm just gonna click the channel strip, choose the layer editor, and then set the lowest note to be above my synth bass sound. We're gonna repeat this for every sound except for the bass. Now that that's done, I'm just giving my left hand more permission to follow the bass guitar on any runs, to match the kick drum if it feels right, and just have more flexibility in general. This technique is a great idea when you have something more specific in mind for the bass, freeing up those other sounds from those notes. It lets the left hand focus on the synth bass parts and you don't have to worry about the piano or pads getting caught up trying to follow along or getting in the way. So let me show you what that sounds like.
So this technique is a little bit more complicated and you really have to focus your playing attention on that left hand. But if you've got something you really wanna nail with the synth bass part, you've gotta free your left hand up to do that. So moving those other parts to the right hand only is a great technique. The last technique is to introduce more rhythmic complexity to your synth bass playing in the left hand. You can do this by going to a pluck style sound like we talked about earlier, by choosing a sound that naturally decays over time, or by using a synth bass with an arpeggiator effect. Let me stick to this exact same layered patch. I'm just gonna turn off the sustain button for this synth bass sound. So it essentially turns it into a pluck sound. So I'm just gonna push this button, and now these notes are gonna decay really quickly. And that's gonna give me a much more aggressive synth bass sound. I can match the kick drum. It's gonna change the feel of this patch quite a bit. So this is a big stylistic shift for the patch overall, but if we were playing a mid-tempo or an upbeat song where we really wanted a lot of energy from the bass sound, having the freedom to be able to play that pluck bass, match the kick drum, match what your bass guitarist is doing is the way to go. Now we could get something pretty different from the same synth bass sound if we just had an arpeggiator. So let me show you now what it sounds like when I turn on this arpeggiator effect. Now this particular arpeggiator is playing a pretty simple eighth note pattern. So there's a lot of space in between. So we could actually bring these other sounds back down into the layer range if we wanted to, since the arp is leaving lots of space for them to stand out. So now you know some common synth bass sounds and some techniques for introducing them. This brings us to the most important part of the video. I want to address some of the common reasons folks hesitate or run into trouble when trying to introduce synth bass to their worship teams. First off, you might worry that you're gonna tick off your bass player, right? It's important before you start bringing this stuff to the table to talk to your worship leaders, talk to your band directors, and explain what you're hoping to do and why. Figure out how you'd like to approach it all together and bring the bass guitarists on your team into that conversation. And you wanna make sure they know that you're not there to make up for their lack of skill or fill space they're not good enough to fill, but instead that you want to enhance and complement what they're already doing, making them sound even better, and that you'll be collaborating with them to figure out how to blend what you're doing into the mix. Second, sometimes people worry that the sound system isn't up for these kinds of sounds, or that people in the congregation might not be up for it. They might freak out if you throw too much bass at them. Now there's some merit to this concern, so again, collaboration is key. Make sure your audio engineers know what you and your worship team's leadership are hoping to accomplish. Try and dedicate some time during a rehearsal to running through some of the sounds you'd like to try introducing, and let your audio engineers hear what you've got. That's when you'll notice stuff like whether there's a default EQ on the keys channel that cuts out all the frequencies below 200 hertz and where your mix engineers can take some time to set up better gain staging to be able to handle the signal you send them. Now, you can also ask your worship leader to spend some time sitting or standing out in the seats to hear and feel how the synth bass sounds will be experienced by your congregation and give feedback to you and the audio booth to make things sound better and more balanced. Lastly, you might hesitate to dive into playing synth bass because it feels like a whole different instrument. You're not a bass player, you're a keys player. Maybe you're classically trained and feel more comfortable playing more traditional piano parts. To you, I'd say it doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to change your playing techniques overnight or even really at all up front to get started. Just find some simple bass sounds and layer them into what you're doing really subtly. Play simple parts in your left hand that focus on single bass notes or two 
and you'll be able to add some depth right away. Now, if you're still feeling a bit at a loss on where to get started with Synthbase, I'd recommend that you consider the Sunday Keys template, our all-in-one worship keys solution. Sunday Keys includes powerful, ready-to-play synth bass sounds, dialed in for worship music with predefined layer ranges and audio effects to make sure they blend into the mix. Check out the link in the description to see if Sunday Keys is right for your worship team. We just updated Sunday Keys with a brand new batch of synth bass presets, so everything you've heard in this video and lots more is ready for you to discover in Sunday Keys. If you found these tips helpful, please take a second to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. That's the number one way you can help support us so we can release more videos like this one. And if you really wanna show support, share a link to this video with a friend or worship leader you know. If you've got questions this video didn't answer, just leave a comment and let us know how we can help. Thanks for watching, have a great day.